Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're going to be looking at how to actually use SOPs and geometry to create paths for your cameras inside a touch designer. Now this can be a really helpful feature because as you can see here, you can quickly and easily create really complex, natural feeling camera movements and animations without having to go through the whole process of keyframing every single thing. So you can see in this example, I've got a 10 by 10 by 10 grid of boxes here and I have my camera perfectly kind of rotating around this box and always aiming its view at the center of this box. So there's going to be a couple of nice tricks we're going to take a look at in here. So let's go ahead and actually delete everything in this project and we're going to get started from scratch. I'm even going to close my viewers here and show you how to set those up yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our rendering environment with our grid of boxes. So I'll go ahead and I know I'm going to have a camera comp, so I'll make that. I know I'll probably need some kind of light comp, so I'll make that as well. I know that I'm going to need a render top, so I'll go ahead and make that. And now we can start working with our geometry. Now one common mistake that a lot of folks do is, especially with the camera comp, you've probably seen this look at parameter that allows you to look at your geometry. Now the common mistake a lot of folks do is that they'll have their geometry and they'll actually physically look at the geometry. Now this can work a lot of the time, but oftentimes it leaves you with a li little bit less flexibility in what you can do with your camera because anything that you want to change in terms of your camera's view is then actually going to have to happen on the geometry, which is really not ideal, especially if you're coming from filmmaking background or if you really love cinematography, being able to really move your camera freely while having your actors in the scene be static can be a powerful thing. So one of the things we're not going to do is have our camera look directly at our geometry. But we'll get to that in a second. So let's go ahead and make our geometry here. I'm going to make a box sop because I'm going to instance tons of little boxes in a grid. I'll go ahead and right click on the output of that box sop and drop in a geometry comp. Now I'm also going to make my box sop a lot smaller here, so I'll say even something like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1 in the size, X, Y, and Z. And because this geometry comp has the render and display flags turned on, I can see my geometry in my render. So I'll go ahead and turn on the overlay button here just so I can see it in my background. And I'm going to now create my grid of boxes. Now you could do this in a lot of different ways. You could use grid sop and then copy it, or you can use a line sop and then copy that and then copy that result. But a fun trick is also the box sop itself has a way that allows you to make a grid within itself. And we can do this by using these divisions down here. So what I'm gonna do before I even turn that on is I'm gonna activate the viewer and I'm gonna hit W to go into wireframe mode so you can see exactly what's happening as we're setting this up. So by default, your box is going to have points in all of the corners. Once I set the divisions on, you can see that it actually divides the box by the amount of X, Y, Z divisions that we have set up here. So we can see that now it's a three by three grid of boxes. Now, in most cases, I recommend also turning on the enforcement bars because that's going to ensure that you have points in all of the corners and positions. And then what we can say is, you know what? I want a grid of 10 by 10 by 10. Let me fix that. And now we're essentially going to have a 10 by 10 by 10 grid of points that we can use for instancing our geometry. So this is really helpful if you're working with 3D grids, quick way to generate those. So what I can do is go over to my geometry, go to the instancing page, turn that on, and even grab my box, drag and drop it onto the translate op, and then select my P0 for X. P1 for my Y and P2 for my Z. And then what I can do is come to my box and start to scale that up by middle clicking and dragging on that parameter here. Just so I can get a nice dense grid of boxes so we can actually see when we're going around it, but not so squishy that they're all overlapping on top of each other. Now we can start to look at this camera options here. Because for example, if we wanted to rotate this camera all the way around here just using native translates, we would probably have to do some really annoying keyframing that involved translations and rotations, but that's not really the procedural way of handling these kind of things. So what I'm going to do first is actually split my viewer here so I can open a geometry viewer. 
And this is really nice because it just gives us something that's similar to how the geometry comp viewer works, but it's kind of for our entire area of this network right now. So I'll go ahead and click up in the arrow, split left and right. And then in this little downward pointing arrow, which you can see under my mouse says pane type, I'm gonna switch that to geometry viewer. Now I essentially have something that functions very, very similarly to my GeoComp viewer. So I can left click, right click, and middle click and drag to move around. But the nice thing is I can also see cameras in here. I can also see the light over here. So you really get a full sense of the 3D environment we're working in. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. And don't worry about this green highlight because what that shows us is which object in the network actually has itself highlighted, which object is selected. So you can see if I click on my camera, it's gonna put the green highlight on my camera. If I click on my light, that's gonna get the green highlight. So that can just be a nice thing that we can use to find which object we're looking at, but it's not really reflective of the rendering happening. So we've got our box of boxes here. And what I wanna do is essentially make a circular path around this box. Now this is just an example and you can take this technique and really apply it to any kind of geometry. So I'll start by making a circle stop. And what I'll do just to help visualize this is I'll actually create a geometry comp for this that we can later turn off the rendering for. So I'll go ahead and right click on the output, go to my geometry comp, drop that in, and we'll see our circle inside of that grid, or I should say cube of cubes. That's gonna be a hard one to say over and over again, my cube of cubes. Um, now, the first thing I want to do is I want to kind of rotate or change the orientation plane of this so that it's not looking at me on the Z and Y axis, which I think is X and Y plane is what it's set to by default. I want to change it to the Z and X plane. That way, it's essentially looking at it from the top down. Now, I'm going to go ahead and also increase the size of this till it's just outside of my cube of cubes. So that way I know my path is gonna be going around the outside of this little piece of content here. So now what I can do is I can come right to my camera and where I have the path SOP, I can grab this circle SOP and say, use this as my path. Now, one thing you have to be very careful of if you're using the path SOP, path stop parameter is that now all of your translations are offsets from that path. So you can actually see here my five units on the z-axis is not ex ex actually five units on the z-axis. It's five units away from where that path stop would tell it to be. So in this case, I usually recommend just zeroing out all your transforms. So just like we can see here, my camera sits right on top of that path. Now, the fun thing about this is how easy it is to use because once you have a SOP here, you can almost imagine that if you unfurled your SOP or just started from the first point going to the last point, that's essentially gonna be a zero to one value that you can just control with this slider, which is really fun because it's super easy. You can do it with almost any kind of path. It's, it's a really cool and flexible technique. So you can see here, even just changing this zero to one value, I go all the way around the circle. So that's great because now we have the kind of transformation position and we just have to worry about our rotation. Now this is where, like I was saying earlier, a lot of folks tend to default to actually taking their geometry and making it the look at parameter here. Now this is nice because you can see once that camera is always looking at the center of this geometry and once I start moving the position, these two things kind of work harmoniously and give us this camera that spins perfectly around the cube of cubes while also always looking down into the middle of it. The one problem here can be, like I was saying, if I wanted to maybe have the camera start to pan up a little bit during this rotation or have it kind of even just look up and down and, and bob and weave a little bit, I don't really have a lot of control over its look at position. So what you see a lot of pros doing is instead of looking directly at the geometry, they're gonna look at a null comp. And if you've never used a null comp before, Really, it doesn't do anything just like the nulls in the top family or the chop family, except it's a null that exists in 3D space. So you can almost think about it like a placeholder position. And you can use this for doing things like parenting transforms. Uh, actually, parenting transform is probably the other big place that it's used aside from this kind of look at target. So what I can do is go ahead and just make a null component here. 
I'll put it above my camera. And then what I can do is grab that null and look at that instead. Now this is gonna functionally give me the same result right now. So as I move around my position here, I'm kind of spinning around the cube and looking at the center. But the nice thing is now I have freed and separated my geometry, its animation and positions and details from my look at target. So what I could do is as I'm moving around the position here, I could also transform my null and say, you know what, now start to look upwards through this cube of cubes as I'm moving around that position without having to actually edit or change the geometry. So that's a really great thing because now you can really think about this two-armed mechanism of a camera control system where you have a path of geometry that you've made, you're using that zero to one value to move around it, and then you also have this kind of target that tells you where you're looking that you can also animate as well. Now this is really, really helpful and can be really powerful. And the last thing I usually do in these kind of setups is create some kind of signal that controls this position. Now this can really be anything. And if you're working on an interactive project, this can even be something like a connect, uh, head position, hands position. It can be a mouse, it can be a joystick. But a lot of times when I'm doing these animations where I want something to happen over time, ding, ding, ding in my brain says, you know what I need is a timer chop. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my timer chop. I'm gonna go to my outputs and turn off the ready and done just cause I don't really need those channels. I'll go back to timer. I think 10 seconds is perfectly fine for this example. And I'm gonna turn on the cycle and turn off the cycle limit. So that way it basically infinitely loops around that 10 second mark. So I'll just reinitialize this and then hit start. And I can see that now I have this timer running, which timer fraction very conveniently is a zero to one value. So that means we can really easily map this zero to one timer over 10 seconds to our zero to one value for where our camera is on this long path that we've created for it. So what I'll do is I'll just add a null chop after this. And then on my camera here where I have my position, I can drag and drop this channel as a reference. And now I can see I have this perfect 10 second animation loop of me moving the camera around this cube while looking directly inside of it. If I wanted to make some fancy kind of even natural camera movements, this is where the null comp comes into play because what I can do is create a noise top or chop in this case, noise chop. Go to the common page, turn on time slicing so I get a little bit of a little jiggly value there. I'm gonna go ahead and create a math chop after this because I wanna rearrange that a little bit. And then I'll create a null chop. And what I can do is even come right to my null, reference that on the Y channel here of the translate. And you can see it's a little bit intense, but that's where our math comes into play. So I can say, you know what, take my negative one to one value and rearrange it to be negative 0.1 to positive 0.1. And now it's basically just gonna jiggle our target a little bit up and down, giving it a little bit of like maybe a handheld camera vibe. But you get the idea where now I'm really able to, without disturbing the actual geometry, the actual scene itself, have this camera spinning going on a path and simultaneously have the look at target being an animated object in and of itself. So these are some really useful tricks, this camera path creation. And of course, once you actually get to your render time, you turn off the render and display flags of the circle, and that way you're just seeing your regular content. But this trick is something we've used countless times on different projects. And this null comp is especially important if you're doing look ats where you need to have a little bit more fine tuned control of that look at. Enjoy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.